Welcome, welcome, patrons. Frankly, I'm crunched for time this week, so let's go over something I've been hiding in my back pocket for just such an occasion. Let's talk about the Penny Arcade Dragon Age comics. And the video. About. To start a quick history lesson on what Penny Arcade is, or was, for the young kids out in the audience. It started as a webcomic in the late 90s, and over the next 10 years became probably the largest and well-known webcomics of the late 2000s. I was never really into webcomics at the time, but just being on the internet back then, I know who they were. If you went to any site that mentioned video games or anything nerdy, chances are there was something about Penny Arcade on it. So back in 2009-2010, when Dragon Age Origins was being released, Penny Arcade was at its height, and as such, Bioware contacted the artist for a collaboration to promote their new game. From my understanding, each of the comics came out one page a week leading up to the release of Dragon Age Origins, its expansion Awakening, and Dragon Age 2. My only guess as to why Penny Arcade didn't make anything official for Inquisition was that the webcomic has slowly dropped in popularity and the two co-creators have income sources from other places now. Now, keep in mind that all I'm about to go over is promotional material and as such is free to view, so I've linked all the things I'm about to talk about down below that you can see them for yourself. So now that you understand why Bioware asked for these comics and that they exist, let's go into what they are about. Dragon Age Origins also known as the Morrigan One. The comic opens up with the Templars from Lothering looking over the body of a newly slain woman. Sir Thiel explains that this woman can't be the person they are looking for. Thiel expresses doubt about what they have just done, saying that was their task really just to kill wilder folk? But an older Templar dismisses his fears, saying that they are doing the Maker's work. He also mentions priests rather than priestesses, but oh well. Theol stands up for himself, saying that he doesn't think that excuses what they have done, and that he should tell the Mother in Lothering. But the other Templar puts his sword to Theol's throat, threatens him, and then stabs him. While Theol seemingly bleeds out, the other Templar is confronted with Flemeth, Morgan, and a bunch of Sylvans. The Templars yell back that they will not hear her words, but Flemeth says that they believe the Maker makes all things, so he made her, and therefore he must know something that they don't for her to exist, or that there are things he just doesn't know. A Templar is killed by a flaming Sylvan, another seemingly taken over by a Morrigan to attack the others is killed by the leader Templar, and then Morrigan corners another one. The Templar states that he is the Maker's will and Morrigan chastises him, saying how she wonders why the Maker hasn't appeared yet if they call him so much. But she is no meek circle mage, and then she kills him, crushing him with vines. With them all dead, Flemeth praises Morrigan, calling her a black briar and maid of thorns. But yeah, Morgan makes a snippy comment about finally pleasing her mother, we get an ominous panel of a black widow spider, and Flemeth comments on how Morgan is perfect for her purpose. But she does wonder when they will stop hosting Templars in their woods. I have nothing super interesting to add about this comic, it's, it's alright. You get the hint that Flemeth has something in mind for Morgan, well it's less a hint and more of a slap in the face. And I can see this being a pretty good opening to want to know more about who Morrigan is. Dragon Age Origins Awakening, also known as the Nathaniel One. The comic begins with Nathaniel looking towards Vigil's Keep. He thinks on how his grandfather was a Grey Warden and what he would think of the Order currently. Would he weep? Would he stand up and correct them? Nathaniel believes that he would act and as such he is sneaking inside. Nathaniel is offended that the Wardens would not only take his family's keep, but fill it with Orlesians, the very thing that his family fought so hard to drive out. Nathaniel believes his father, Rendon Howe, was a patriot. He may have done terrible things, but he did so in the name of his nation, to protect. And Nathaniel hopes to one day be half the man he was. He thinks back on his father's death, how he believes that it must have been an Orlesian plot, and maybe he did kill the Kuslans, but they must have deserved it. At this point, Nathaniel is able to break into the keep, knocking out guards along the way. He takes on two at a time with his sword. And finally, Nathaniel thinks about his father as he passes by his portrait, thinking that he will end the Orlesian occupation of his home tonight. Also, the, uh, the art from the last page is the same as the first page, but anyway. Out of the two large comics, I think this one's actually the better of the two. If you have played Dragon Age Origins, you already want to punch this new Nathaniel guy for saying what he has done, and let's not mention that he is House Son. Ugh. But yeah, even though I know what happens and that you can change his mind about his father, reading this just makes me want to go back and actually play Awakening. Not even like Awakening that much. The Unnamed Dragon Age 2 one. The blurb on the Penny Arcade website says that this mini comic was an honor for Dragon Age 2's release. The comic, which has no title, doesn't make much sense in the world of the game, but let's talk about it anyway. 
Being only three pages long, it stars a default male hawk talking with Isabella. The two are fighting Quinari, with Hawk complaining about it while Isabella quipping that he's going to be a hero. Isabella then says she has a gift for finding things before they are lost. Okay, and then they are interrupted by the air shock. The end. I think this is never made to be anything more than a cute little, hey, the game is out, yay, thing, so I'm just gonna give it a pass. While it doesn't make a lot of sense in the context to the actual game, it does make a lot of sense in context to the promotional material that was out at the time. The comic shares a color palette, includes both Isabella, a male hawk, and the air shock, which are in the trailer, and they also use the trailer for the last frame of the background. Although I have no idea where they got Captain Isabella, Blood Wake, Witch of All Coasts. In the end, this is just a cute little comic that Penny Arcade made to support the company that sponsored them. The Hindsight Belt. After 30 seconds of logos and splash screens, the video finally starts, and those that have read all of the Dragon Age 2 codex entries will recognize that this is an animated version of the entry on the Hindsight Belt. Well, part of it at least. Long story short, while there are a lot of famous magic armors and swords and whatnot, there aren't that many famous belts. Except for this one. This one, etched in Lyrium, has all of the names and the causes of death of its previous owners, and the belt protects its new owner from a similar death, but it's only a matter of time until your name is on the belt. The video itself is pretty cute, just a nice little animatic in the Penny Arcade style, but it should be noted that the entry in the game actually has a bit more to it. In-game, the entry expands on the belt's maker, Thaulid Hammerspur, I think. It talks about how he wanted to make a famous belt, that he wanted to be famous, and that he was drunk when he died by falling into his forge. Although I have no idea who actually the narrator for this is, at times it almost sounds like the voice actor for Varric, Brian Bloom, but I'm not sold on it, so if, if you know who this is, let me know. The Penny Arcade site also mentions that Gabe and Tycho, the two main characters for Penny Arcade's main comic and the alter egos of the site's co-creators, had created the belt. That's kind of fun. Which, side note, how badass would it be to just have Hawk's name written and then the cause of death being stuck in the fade? That's, I don't know, I find that interesting. And that, dear patrons, is all that we have on the Penny Arcade comics. Thank you for putting up with such a short little video, and I promise actual lore stuff next week. I don't know if it'll be longer. It's, uh, it's, it's September's weird. Anyway, if you still have green questions, proof that I'm wrong, comments about your own fan theories, feel free to tweet me at Gildathon on Twitter or send a PM to Zogelanon on Reddit. Dress your all.